Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to begin by thanking my friend Chairman Smith for his leadership on the Science Committee, particularly on STEM education. For the second Congress in a row, we are considering the STEM Education Act on the House floor. I am grateful that we are advancing these important efforts in a bipartisan fashion, thanks in large part to chair the Chairman's willingness to work across the aisle. I would also like to thank and recognize the work of Representative Lipinski for his diligent work on this and many other bills, and my good friend, Ranking Member Eddie Bernice Johnson, for her thoughtful leadership on STEM education and on all issues facing the Science Committee. The STEM Education Act of 2015 supports teachers who are preparing students to be the engineers, manufacturers, and scientists of tomorrow. We all know that students, particularly elementary school students, learn best when they are engaged and interested. However, any parent knows that it can be difficult to spark a student's passion for STEM subjects without innovative and creative learning environments. And with more and more jobs of the 21st century requiring STEM skills, we need to better prepare our children for these good paying jobs. As a mother of three, I remember when my children had incredible teachers who made science and math accessible and fun. And we should do all we can to support innovative, passionate teachers for every child in every school. This bill today includes sections of my STEM Jobs Act, a bill expanding the Robert Master Teaching Fellowship at the National Science Foundation. Currently, Master Teaching Fellowships provide mentoring, training, and financial support to STEM professionals who want to enter the teaching profession. In Connecticut, we have two Robert Noyce Teaching Scholarship Programs. UConn's Teachers for Tomorrow program prepares teachers throughout the state to teach math, biology, physics, and chemistry to students of all ages. And at the University of Bridgeport, the Master Teaching Fellowship Program places master physics teachers in high-need high schools in southeast, southwestern Connecticut. Our bill today expands the Master Teaching Fellowship so that those who are working towards a master degree, not just those who already have a master's degree, are also eligible to apply, supporting more passionate teachers and in doing so, allowing more students to benefit from excellent STEM instructors. Our bill also promotes learning outside of the classroom. In Connecticut, we have the wonderful Connecticut Science Center with incredible creative exhibits, like one called Grossology, where children can explore how to keep their bodies healthy by crawling through an enormous digestive system and experiencing a larger-than-life sneeze perfect for inspiring our nation's future doctors and biomedical researchers. In addition to educating and inspiring our children, science centers, planetariums, and aquariums across the country also provide invaluable teacher training. Last year alone, the Connecticut Science Center trained nearly 1,200 teachers who then went on to teach and inspire tens of thousands of their students. The bill today directs the National Science Foundation to continue to award competitive grants for out-of-school STEM learning for both students and teachers. Finally, our bill takes the important step of expanding the definition of STEM for federal programs and grants to include computer science. As a member of the Science Committee and Representative Lipinski's STEM Caucus, I have been a strong advocate for increasing literacy in computer science. This winter, I joined students from across the state and more than 100 million worldwide to participate in an hour of code. We learned basic computer programming skills and discovered it's a lot of fun. I also helped create the Congressional STEM app competition and hosted this competition in my district where students created and built apps for their smartphones. The entries submitted by these high school students were incredibly innovative and useful, technologically advanced, as well as terrific examples of the problem solving we need all of our students to learn. The winning apps included an app to keep teachers informed during a school emergency, a program to help students know if they are going to be able to catch their bus on time, 
An app I know that my children would have benefit from, benefited from greatly on those cold Connecticut winter mornings like this morning. And an app to help high school freshmen learn their way around a big new school. The STEM app competition helps students experience for themselves how important and fun computer science can be. But for example, in Connecticut, where only 65 schools across the state have dedicated computer science programs, it is critical that we continue to expand access to computer science education for all students. Mr. Speaker, I am proud that we are rising above partisan politics to advance the bipartisan STEM Education Act of 2015. This demonstrates that we can come together to help our children, to help them thrive, and to help ensure that they will be competitive in the 21st century global economy. I want again to thank Chairman Smith and Representative Lipinski for their leadership and the committee staff for their hard work on the STEM Education Act. And I would also like to thank my friend, Ranking Member Johnson, a dedicated STEM champion who is leading all of us on the Science Committee to truly recognize the importance of a robust and multidisciplinary STEM education and inspire us to do more across the board to support STEM. I look forward to working with Ranking Member Johnson and the rest of the committee to further advance our priorities in